with a, because this theme is the science of love. Who can be against love? Well, a lot of people are against love. <laughs> and especially when you, when you define love in the prophetic and Jewish and biblical context in which Jesus understood it, that is to say, as love justice. So I'm going to begin uh, this talk I'm calling the, um, the obstacles to love, uh, reading the signs of our times. Uh, this is what I sense is, uh, is holding us back from uh, the kind of vision that Teilhard and Ilya and many others have about the hopeful rise of human consciousness. Uh, so I'm going to talk about what I call the four Ds. The first is denial. Ever heard of denial? <laughs> this is very Floridian because I was... Yes, I was here in Florida uh, on January 19, uh, 2016. A few years ago, it was presidential running time. And the conference was about 150 um, church people from many traditions, except the Roman Catholic. I think there are only one or two representatives from that, as far as I knew. Uh, the theme was climate change. So the first speaker was a scientist. And, he, and it wasn't far from here, it was in, the, in this area. So this fellow stands up and he has slides. And he shows pictures of Florida today. 10 years from now, chop. 20 years from now, chop, chop. 30 years from now, chop, chop, chop. I went away feeling, whoa, I'm not sure if I'd invest in real estate in Florida. Maybe, <laughs> maybe rubber dinghies and, and boots, <laughs> big boots. But the key was that at that time, in your state, you who are from Florida, um, there were three, two presidential candidates and a governor who were in complete public denial about climate change. They should have been at that conference. And uh, as you know, that governor, who's now a senator, uh, shortly before the conference started, put out this document saying no one's allowed to use a word in, in, pub in the government uh, correspondence, something that Donald Trump picked up on a year ago. He, too, has forbidden the word in, in his uh, governmental correspondence. That's denial, folks. And to think that it's in the highest decision-making places of our governments is, uh, on the one hand, kind of bad news, but on the other, it gets you moving. Moral outrage is a virtue. Moral outrage is a virtue. <clears throat> Thomas Aquinas says that to choose to be ignorant of something that is important is a mortal sin, which is to say it's a virus. A virus results from that, that affects others and yourself. Meister Eckhart, who I'm so glad appears in Ilya's consciousness and books on a regular basis, um, he was very Franciscan, though wrapped in a Dominican robe. Um, <laughs> although I was a, a Franciscan archbishop who called the first trial against him, but I've tried to forgive that guy real hard. <laughs> I won't hold it against you. <laughs> Promise. <laughs> uh, my striker says, God is the denial of denial. I just like that a lot. No, I love it. God is a denial of denial, which means if we are, when we are in denial, God is nowhere present. Because truth is nowhere present. And the whole idea of divinity as truth is, is absolutely archetypal in our species. It's everywhere. God is the denial of denial. <clears throat> of course, this denial is also a denial of science. And this happens across the board in a lot of our culture and religions today. So the, um, there's a great price we pay for denial. But what is the opposite of denial? What is the medicine here? Well, the medicine is waking up. Waking up. And that's really what spirituality is about, I think, if you had to summarize it in one 
phrase. It's waking up. Jesus t gives many stories about waking up, and Paul uses the phrase strongly as well, that we are here to wake up. And there's a beautiful poem from Kabir, the wonderful 15th century uh, mystic in India. Wake up, wake up. Why do you go on sleeping? The night is over. Do you want to lose the day the same way? Others who manage to get up early have already found an elephant or a jewel. <laughs> You've lost so much already while you sleep, slept. It was so unnecessary. Listen to me, the greatest spirit, your teacher is near. Coming, wake up. Circling your head right now, close to you. You have slept for millions and millions of years. Why not wake up this morning? I love you. Think this over. If you are in love, why are you asleep? I think that question can be addressed to our political, our educational, our, our economic, and our religious and leaders uh, and to all of ourselves uh, at this time in history. Ours is a time for waking up. In Meister Eckhart says that uh, there are two kinds of people, enlightened and not enlightened. And the enlightened ones, he says, <coughs> um, well, the unenlightened ones are, are, accustomed, uh, are not accustomed to inward things, so they do not know what God is. Like a person who has wine in a cellar but has not drunk it or tasted it. Such a person doesn't know that it is good. Thus it is with people who live in ignorance. They do not know what God is, and they think and believe that they are alive. <laughs> so it's like having good wine in the cellar and not tasting it. The psalmist says, taste and see that God is good. The word taste in both Latin and Hebrew is the basis of the word wisdom. Sapere sapientia in Latin, the same in chokmah in Hebrew. I said, yeah, Hebrew. Um, so tasting and wisdom go together. And we choose to cut ourselves off from wisdom when we choose to remain ignorant. So we should certainly be examining what it is that, uh, that we prefer to truth. <clears throat> what gods we are worshiping by remaining ignorant. And of course, spreading the ignorance to others, especially if you're in a position of power, 